So here's the question I want you to answer below in the comments after you've watched this entire video, because oh boy, is it a doozy. So I understand you are spiritual is what you want to call it, um, because we don't have a terminology of how do I love God when I hate the church? Mm. Uh, and can I love him uh, without hating the politics of church? Should the gospel change with the times? Should the word of God and what God expects of us as Christians, particularly on this channel as Catholics, change with the way of society? Now, I've talked about how me embracing my faith fully and really living in Christ changed my views of the world. And I actually became more conservative than I already was. But at the same time, it hasn't stopped me from being able to love my fellow man and to have dignity and respect in other humans just for being humans and people of God, whether they believe or not. But we all know that there is a segment of people who fundamentally believe that the gospel and how we live our lives as Christians need to change in order to stop the bleeding of the church. Bleeding as in losing members. We hear this from Protestants as much as we hear this from Catholics. And I wanna get into a specific story today where this came up in such a major way. Now here on my channel, I want to challenge you to think. This isn't just a channel about how to pray and become better Catholics, but also how can we live in this world that's changing so rapidly and stay steadfast to our faith? How can we be able to articulate why we believe what we believe to others? And more importantly, how do we grow closer to Christ even as we have all these vices and temptations looming around us? If I can help you to figure that out, then my job here is being done. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I came across this article and it's been a buzz in different places on the internet as of late about a pastor, his name is Pastor Jamal Bryant, and he's the pastor at a Baptist megachurch in Georgia. The particular article that we're going to actually read from today is from the Christian Post. So the name of the article is called Pastor Jamal Bryant suggests new gospel for grown-ups who are used to getting some, <clears throat> let's just say action. Megachurch Pastor Jamal Bryant of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church in Stonecrest, Georgia, has called for the church to repackage itself to include a discussion of a new gospel for grown-ups that doesn't tell single Christians that are used to getting some that they need to be celibate. Okay, let's stop there for a second. You know, I really do not like the word celibate. I absolutely hate it actually, because for our understanding as Catholic, celibacy is a very specific thing. Celibacy is usually taken under a vow and that's taken by religious order. So priests, nuns and sisters. And you even have people like consecrated virgins who give themselves up fully for Christ. So celibacy is a very specific vow within our church. And I so much more like the usage of the term chase, chastity. Now you know that the Catholic church has so much literature on chastity. And chastity is a virtue. And it's not just about denying sex because you're trying to hold off until marriage, but it's acknowledging the sanctity of sex and how it is a co-creation with the Lord, how it's meant to bond couples together for life. There's so much richness and deepness about it that as I began to actually study what chastity truly is and how to apply it to my life, it blew me away. And being able to explain that to other people, especially when you're in dating situations, it's so much easier when you understand the why. And the why isn't just about some game about making them hold out for you. And it says a lot for those who are Christians who are trying to live in the way of Christ. That's what we're expected. Christ was chaste. He was a man of great discipline on many levels. He was a man who fasted and prayed every single day, several times throughout the day. So you mean to tell me that you trying to pursue a Christian, Christ-led relationship and hopefully marriage for a lot of people, that you cannot live a chaste life outside of that covenant? How the heck are you supposed to stay true to your vows when you're in that covenant of marriage, right? So I think that this conversation around celibacy and chastity actually needs to be reframed. Yes, absolutely for today's people, but not reframed as in we don't need it anymore and that you can just go ahead and do whatever you want sexually, but reframed in a way that says, hey, this is what it means. This is why it's important. And this is why you should be living that way and experiencing your dating life in this way as well. Now, before I continue with this, I want to stop for a second and ask you 
to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and hit that like button if you like talking about current events like this and how it affects us as Catholics. And join the channel as a member because I'm going to put out another video, a second follow up to this video where I talk about chastity and just my experience in the dating world and in the modern world right now and how I'm navigating my life around that. And if that's something that interests you, join as a channel member and watch that video. I'll put the link to the video right up here. To join the channel, click the button right below here next to the subscribe button that says join. But let's go ahead and continue. Christianity in and to itself is pro-choice, but we don't say anything because a lot of black churches are white evangelicals in drag and they don't know who it is that they are because their politics are thrown off and don't really speak to, you okay? I'm good, I'm fine. <laughs> don't really speak to what's happening in the culture. Speaking in a recent interview with actor and media personality Rashan Ali on her Cool Soror podcast, Brian argued that if conservative Christians don't evolve in how they engage in the culture on issues such as abortion, sexuality, and recreational drugs like marijuana. I'm mindful that I'm not after Christians. I'm at the people who don't go to church. And a lot of churches are just recycling people from other churches. That's not who I'm after. I'm looking for people that smell like weed. New Birth is the largest land-owning black church in America. Wow. And so my position to my deacons is why aren't we not raising cannabis? I'll be able to bring in black males they're able to do it legally. Mm. I'm teaching them farming. Oh my God. I'm helping them to enhance the ecosystem. Uh, th th this is the kind of conversation. So if the guy, black boy in Bankhead said, they growing weed at the church, where do I join? Yes. I don't need no pamphlet for him. You know I mean? Right, right. <laughs> he coming in. He coming in. And that, that's the group that I'm going after. Mega churches might soon become a thing of the past. So I think that it has to be repackaged and repurposed, or else uh, I want to announce on Rashawn's podcast for the very first time you are getting ready to witness the death of mega churches. Our children will not be going to mega churches, they will be watching online. And that which used to be sanctuaries will be studios. So those who are caught in these wooden pews, get ready to sell them on eBay. Uh, because if you don't repackage, then your church is going to be a condo. I don't think it's a bad thing if mega churches go out of business. Honestly, I think that mega churches are a problem, especially in the black community. When a lot of the congregation starts to notice that the pastors are driving better cars than the congregation, they're living in better houses, they have better clothes, better lives, or kids are going to better schools while the congregation suffers. A lot of that is happening in Protestant churches across the country. You know, they like to point fingers at the Catholic church, like, you know, we listen, we have our garbage too. We have our skeletons and all that other stuff, but what they're doing isn't any better. And it's showing in the numbers for the people that are showing up in the congregations, which is dwindling year after year. So the stuff that was applicable for your grandmother means nothing to you. Uh, and so I said, I had a Zoom with all of my singles just this week, is that for me to tell 16 year olds to be celibate is one thing. A 37 year old who's used to getting some I need a different kind of gospel. Said the 51-year-old Bryant, who is a single divorced father. <laughs> you, now you see what's going on here and why he would say something like that. It's almost like he's trying to talk his own sins of fornication and then breaking his covenant of marriage with his wife and God for whatever reasons. I'm not going to make any speculation, but I feel like this whole entire thing that he's doing, this article just oozes of when someone else is trying to force what their demons are on you and on everybody else to kind of make their wrongs right. It's almost as though he's trying to change the gospel for him to play around and philander the way that he wants to versus following the mandate that he's given as a pastor to be an example of chastity, to be an example of Christ here on earth. And I'm not buying it. Honestly, I'm not buying it. I see right through this. But the sad thing is that a lot of Christians and I use that lightly, a lot of Christians feel the same exact way that he does. He then recounted some of what he heard in his meeting with the community of single Christians at his church. This is going to be a good one. I had a Zoom with all of my singles 
just this week is that for me to tell 16-year-olds to be celibate is one thing. A 37-year-old who's used to getting some, I need a different kind of gospel. Yeah. So the church ain't telling me nothing about sex toys. They ain't saying nothing about the church telling me to be celibate, but my gynecologist is saying something got to happen down there because your stuff shutting down. Yeah. So we got to have real gospel for grown-ups. Ma'am. Ma'am. That's not how the human body works. It is alive in the pits of hell. <laughs> no pun intended. Okay, maybe just a little pun intended. That if a woman, and of course this is aimed towards women, right? If a woman does not have intimate actions, she doesn't have sex, that the body's like, use it or lose it. It doesn't work that way. The only reasons why a woman's genitalia will atrophy or deteriorate has to do with hormones. If her sex hormones are off, then things are gonna be really haywire down there. And moreover, this isn't typically a concern for you unless you are a woman who's going through menopause. No amount of intimacy is going to make your body shift and change magically or your female genitalia to come alive through sex if you're going through menopause. I mean, that's just a part of life. So to say that the reasons why Christians, particularly women, can't be celibate or chase is because she's going to lose whatever function she has sexually down below is categorically false. And it just plays to how the devil just can get in there and twist up God's word, right? And trick God's people into doing things that are sinful. The church is not relatable yeah. uh, to our generation and down. So imagine when I was growing up, they were telling you, don't have your phone on in church. I'm telling y'all, turn your phone on, take a selfie, use hashtag new birth now uh, so that we can move forward. Society, Rashawn, changes every four years, but church uh, culture changes every four years, but church culture changes every 20. Ooh. So the average church is 15 years behind schedule. So those of you who are watching, your church is so proud to be on Facebook but all the youth are on TikTok. They are. They stopped being on Facebook when their mother tried to friend them. <laughs> so you got to figure out how am I relevant and how do I repackage? And I kind of want to stop there because the rest of the article goes into some social things about the black church and it being current within, within the activist community. And y'all know, listen, I'm not an activist, I think for myself, but I do think that what he has to say is relevant for people who are a part of that and a part of the black church. So. Let's go back to what he was just saying here. And for that, I can agree partially. Within our mass, I do not think a phone should be on. I don't even think a phone should be on in any church, period. Unless it is after church, unless it is before church, that's fine. But during the mass, no, absolutely not. And I would even go as far as to say during a church service in a Protestant church, absolutely not. Because it's like, is anything sacred anymore? Do we believe that God's presence is there and that he is owed our utmost attention. Our culture today is so voyeuristic. It's like nothing is sacred. Everything has to be put on display. If it didn't happen on social media, it didn't happen at all. I really think that that's a mistake. But I do agree that the church does need to learn how to move forward because society is pushing debauchery online in such an aggressive way, in such an accelerated way, that the church needs to keep up. Having a presence online, having a presence on TikTok, having a presence on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on everything should be utilized in order to grow our message and to stand strong together. But anyway, I wanna ask you this though. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think I'm right or do you think he's right? Do you think there are some things about the church that need to be evolved and changed for today's time? Or do you believe that God's message is completely immutable? That it was relevant then? as much as it is relevant today. Go ahead and post your thoughts in the comments because I would love to hear what you have to say about this issue, especially about chastity. What are your thoughts specifically on chastity in today's time? That's the one that I think we all need to talk about. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch this next video because I talked about exactly how my views changed when I embraced Christ fully in my life. Oh boy, honey, you're gonna wanna check that out. I'll see you over there.